That thumbnail you just clicked on, I made it in one try with a very basic prompt. It's a robot dunking its face in a bowl of sparkling water, recreating this very weird internet trend that's going pretty viral right now. And if you put it side by side, it actually looks very similar to the original image. This is what GPT-40's new image generation model can do. And it's so good that I just canceled my mid-journey subscription just this morning. In this video, I'm gonna show you 10 creative ways that you can use this brand new model to generate any kind of visual content for you or your business. Whether you work in marketing, design, or own the entire company, you're gonna rethink your entire creative team after watching this video. Let's dive right in. All right, so before we get into how to use this model, I'll show you where you can find it. So if you go into ChatGPT, go on your dropdown and look for GPT-40, you'll be able to click on the three dots right here and you'll see we have this create image button that says updated. This is basically the old Dolly. Dolly is dead and this new image generation model is here. So when you click on it, all you have to do is just write some prompt and typically you don't even have to click on the create image. If you just say make an image for me, it will take its time and do something. So in this case, I'll say, generate a image of a sculpture in poly format and then we can just let go i'll send that over one thing is that it takes quite a bit of time compared to dali where it would just basically spit out its first thought about whatever your prompt was so you typically have to wait around 10 to 15 seconds and sometimes i waited up to 20 seconds to get a single image so this one actually took around 35 seconds but you can see the quality of the image is infinitely better than anything you've ever seen in dali it's definitely comparable to how Midjourney has been thus far, but there are major differences between Midjourney and what this is. So we'll go into a series of examples I've already prepared, so you don't have to wait through all the generation of the images. So if we go to this tab right here called Logo Design Request, I obviously wanted to start off with the most basic entrepreneurial business use case, which is making a logo. And typically for me, I would hire a freelancer on Upwork or Fiverr to build this for me, or at least an MVP of what it should look like. If we look at the prompt here, it says design a sleek, minimalist logo for a high tech startup named Neon Flux. The logo should feature a futuristic icon that combines digital pixels with a lightning bolt and then sans serif typeface, that's the font of the actual logo. And then we throw some hex codes right here to tell it exactly what type of color we're going for. And within, again, 30 seconds to a minute, we got this. And what's cool about it is you can download it and use it instantly. So you can see how it has these little squares behind it. It'll allow you to paste it in a way that you can use it instantly on all kinds of collateral. So that's use case numero uno. Numero dos, we have this one here. And by the way, if you're worried about being able to write the prompt to yield the result to begin with, as usual, I got your back. After I show you these nine examples, I'll then walk you through how I put together a ChatGPT project with a very special prompt trained on exactly how to prompt different parts of this model so that you can automate even writing these prompts to begin with. But let's get back to this. So in this case, we wanna generate a mascot. So create a dynamic mascot for a trendy food delivery service called Urban Bite. And then we go through what that should look like. So charismatic cartoon style. And then we end up getting something like this, which is one, unbelievably cute. Two, is actually very high quality. I could totally see myself paying 20 US dollars for a Fiverr freelancer to pump this out. So when I say this is gonna disrupt industries, it's really gonna disrupt industries. But moving on, typically what all image models fail at, with no exception, is generating text or generating high fidelity text, which is why tools like Napkin AI became very famous because you could basically ask for a piece of text to be translated into a visual, and then you'd have the text superimposed on that visual. But to even those AI tools, this is a disruptor. Because if you look at this infographic here, I just asked it for some eco track image infographic, and not only is the font nice, not only is the superimposed style good, you can see here we have a little shadowed description caption, but overall, like all the logos, like all the minimalist flat icons are really high fidelity as well. So next use case, we have posters and flyers. So if you're in the marketing or, you know, marketing typical events at a company or your business, this is a legitimate flyer. It pumped out without using Canva at all. Again, another area of disruption where if you click this, it's high quality. I could totally see this printed out on a long form sheet and posted somewhere. So that's yet another thing you could produce right there. Moving on, social media graphics. So our next prompt here was create a striking 
Instagram post for a luxury skincare brand called Luna Glow. The design should feature a minimalist, elegant layout with soft pastel gradients and delicate floral illustrations. Place the central image, uh, place the central message, radiate your inner glow in a modern font. And you can see here, typically Dolly would have a seizure trying to produce this, but not only does it listen to this detailed instructions to put the text in smack dab the middle of the image, but you have that serene little logo at the very bottom, which again is reasonably high quality. This next use case is one that blew my mind. So typically, if you were to go and ask for a website, you'd go and create what's called a Figma or a Figma design. And now obviously we have tools like Lovable and Bolt and Windsurf, etc., where you can go from text to some form of image or website, but you have to pay for those in general. In this case, if you go to this instruction here and we go to the specific prompt, produce a high fidelity website homepage mockup for Vistatech, a cutting edge technology company. The design should include a clean header with a logo in the top left corner, a hero section with a futuristic image and a services section with custom icon iconography. I can't pronounce that properly. And what I want to zero in on with this prompt before I show you the image is I'm not only giving it very detailed instructions, which Dolly would again collapse if it read one line of it, but we're creating a whole layout. We're creating this mental model of this layout. And the result to me is really impressive, which is this, which is something I could totally see an actual web developer drafting out to me as to what this website might look like. And you can see we even have the call to action button. And if we go back to our prompt here, you'll see we have this call to action button labeled discover more. And again, you can specify the exact colors you're looking for, but in general, like just producing one landing page or one hero page, imagine now taking this and copy pasting this image as a starter prompt for Lovable or Volt or anything where now I can learn from this image and recreate it. So this one, definitely super cool. Next use case. So product packaging. Again, I'm going to hide the result here. Create a photorealistic packaging mockup for Fresh Fizz, a new line of artisanal sparkling water. And then I go through another description. It should have hints of turquoise and silver. And to me, I wouldn't know this is AI generated unless you told me. So if we go to the resulting image here and let's zoom out a tad, you can see fresh fizz, artisanal sparkling water. Look at the way it's labeled the text on this bottle, just like you'd see on a Perrier bottle or a Saratoga bottle for sparkling water. This is unbelievable for product photography. And again, if you are a product photographer, either use this fast or you know, uh, interesting things are gonna happen. And if we click back out here, let's zoom out a tad and click out. Next use case, um, illustrations. I'm cool to show this one. Generate a vibrant hand-drawn illustration of for Book Nook, an independent bookstore. The artwork should depict a cozy, whimsical reading nook with a stack of books, warm ambient lighting, and a friendly cat curled up on a chair. If you go to this, it does definitely embody that entire vibe of that prompt. It looks very cozy. I could see this on like a children's book. And once again, it didn't fail to properly write the text in a way that one, doesn't look out of place, but two, is not alien gibberish like you're typically used to seeing. So if we click on that, uh, the next one here is a complex graphic design. So one interesting thing about this 4.0 image generation model is it's really good at following these very nuanced instructions. So in this case, we say design a sophisticated multi-layered magazine cover for Future Wave, a quarterly business and technology publication. And we get something like this, which I could totally see as a magazine cover with uh, overall H1 heading. You have a subtitle, you have this little label of quarterly business and technology, and it looks really compelling. And those were the use cases that are already prepared. But what's cool is if you go to Google and say paintings, okay, and we go to images and we click on anything here, okay, let's right click on this famous painting and then we'll copy it. We'll go into here. Oh, wrong one. Actually, it doesn't really matter. I can paste it here and I can say, I want you to recreate this image in 3D in a very human-like, lifelike manner. 
Now, this is a very poor prompt. I should have used my own prompt, little master, but I'll show you that right after this. And if I send this prompt, I'll pause and come back so you don't have to wait. Now, this one took a while, but take a look at this. If we go down here, we literally have Van Gogh in 3D with the image behind recreating the exact image we gave it, which again, even with Mid Journey, by the way, if you give it an image, unless you're really good at prompt engineering, it's really hard to take that original image and superimpose a style, let alone a character in that image. So this to me is definitely a huge step forward in image generation moving forward. Now, like I promised, I'm gonna show you how we can actually create better prompts than what I outputted without having to actually think about it ourselves. So if we go to the third tab here called Image Master, we have a set of instructions and a set or one set of knowledge base files. So in this knowledge base file, you'll see it's a .md file. If you don't know what that is, it's just Markdown, which you know a lot of LLMs really like reading. It's very readable because it structures and lays out very easily by putting hashtags where there's headers or subheaders. And how I made this file is actually pretty simple. Uh, last year, Google Doc came up with a way that you can paste text here and you can go to File, Download, and then you can see right here ooh, at the very bottom, you have .md markdown. It just helps the knowledge base be that much more efficient at actually retrieving. If we go back here, by the way, you're gonna have access to this knowledge base file as well as that prompt in the first link in the description below. So don't worry about actually screenshotting anything. If we close this right here, and if you're wondering if what I did with the knowledge base, all I did is I went to ChatGPT Deep Research. I said, hey, there's this brand new image model, came out March 25th, 2025. Do all the research you can on the tips, tricks, on how to use it to get the best results possible. I took that, I got something like this, and then we had some example prompts. We fed it as well. So now with this image master, we have a set of instructions right here. I won't read them again end to end. You'll see it's a pretty long prompt. You are an intelligent image generation assistant designed to help users create high quality visuals using advanced prompting techniques and comprehensive knowledge base provided in the accompanying cheat sheet. So here I'm referencing the knowledge base file so it knows that it can actually check it. When a user requests an image, for example, make me an image of a penguin, follow these steps. And the way I programmed it is it'll try to pump out three different prompts you can use but it will also come up with some clarifying questions so that it can push you back and be more detailed. So if we take this first spin here, let's close this out. I'm just gonna say, make me an image of a nerd who is Canadian and very patriotic making a video on a new image generation model. And we send this over. Instead of actually making the image, by the way, it's just gonna create, again, the prompt. So here's one example prompt, and then we're gonna create another one, okay. And then what's cool is if you can use the ChatGPT project, it's a lot more malleable and you can actually still generate images if you really wanted to within the project. Unlike custom GPTs, which is now seemingly more passe, where pretty much you're not gonna be able to use this in custom GPTs from what I can see moving forward. And while this is generating, one cool thing to note is that ChatGPT projects also allows you, if you click here, to create images in it as well. So if you didn't wanna just use it to create the prompts, but also the images, totally an option for you. One thing you want to make sure is that you select the 4O model, since when I tested 01, it was not working. You didn't have that option to use that updated image. And if we go to the very bottom here, you'll see we have a section called to customize further, where we go through different questions, clarifying questions, that if you want to make things more dialed or more detailed, these questions will help you create better prompts. So one example is, what style are you going for? Photorealistic, digital illustration, etc. Another one is, would you like to include any text in the image? Any specific color scheme you'd like? Again, if you wanna say, I want this kind of blue and that kind of blue, it would generate hex codes to use in that prompt as well. So using this will help you supercharge your experimentation with this very amazing new piece of technology. If you found that helpful and you find this model as amazing as I do, let me know down in the comments below. It helps the video, it helps the algo in general. And if you are a business owner, CEO, or business leader, and you love tips and tricks for how to supercharge yourself in your business, check out the second link in the description below, and maybe I'll see you in my paid community. I'll see you next time.